Hello everybody, today I will be showing you the five projects that actually taught me how to code. So if you're a beginner, I really hope that this video gives you some ideas on stuff you can create. And uh, yeah, let's uh, check out these projects together and see what the hell was going on. Okay, so first project, image to ASCII. So what's happening here? Okay, turn image to ASCII art with Python. This is great, let's check it out. We have the a Python script, this is written in Python. And what you do is that you have an input image like this one, Mona Lisa.jpg, I can show you that actually. This is uh, the Mona Lisa image. And what this uh, script does is that it turns it in to ASCII art. And as of right now, maybe I can open this in like the VS code. I think that should be good. If I now zoom out, holy shit, do you see the resemblance? <laughs> this is Mona Lisa. I really think that this is a great project to do as a beginner, as it requires very little code to get working. You can see here, it's basically just <laughs> this big for loop where I loop through all of the, okay, first I loop through the height of the image and then I do the width. And for each pixel, I check uh, the brightness of it. I think I did. And I add in a text file uh, a new character for each uh, brightness. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. This project will teach you the basics of if and else statements, for loops, as well as you might need to use some libraries to do the image processing. And the result is fun and very visual. So I think this is a cool project to check out if you want to learn. Yeah, whatever really, you can use any language for this. Okay, that was the first project. Next up, we have NoteSync. Okay, so what is NoteSync? This is a Python project that sorts images of notes to corresponding Google Drive folder. <laughs> so this is a project that uh, I created after seeing the Rocket Book notebook, I think it was called. So how this worked was that you would write in your notebook, but then you would scan the page and it would uh, automatically be sorted based on what subject it was. And I can't really remember how these guys did the sorting. Yeah, okay, they have a QR code at the bottom. But uh, for me, I thought, okay, this uh, should be kind of easy to recreate, right? And uh, for sorting myself, I used, did uh, a simple approach and just put uh, a colored post-it note. So here is a blue one, here is a green one. And the way it worked was that it scans the image, searches for any green color, blue color, you name it. And then it uploads it to a corresponding Google Drive folder. So this was a way I could organize my notes while still in school. So if we take a quick look at the script, also written in Python for this one, we see that I use a couple of more libraries, including some HTTP libraries and some Google APIs. So that's why I think this is a great project. It's really not that much more difficult than the previous one, except that on this one we introduce using APIs, which is super cool. So, but I guess I'm using some Google APIs to uh, authenticate with Google Drive and uh, upload my files. So yeah, I also think this is uh, a nice project. So what we checked out here was the uh, uploading functions and for the uh, identification, it's basically gonna look pretty similar to the last project with just for and ifs. So that's uh, very nice. Next up, we have Sudoku Generator. So let's check it out. Okay, so I have my uh, script here that uh, has a bunch of logic. And what this all does is that it can generate a Sudoku board and it can also solve a Sudoku board, which is very cool. So let's try to open uh, this web page right here. Okay, so yeah, here it is. Uh, you can see that I can generate a Sudoku and I can solve Sudoku and I can clear the board. So what's cool about this project is that it teaches you a bit about algorithms. So like I've written here, it uses a backtracking algorithm, which we can check out in Wikipedia. Yeah, I remember they had this animated uh, version, which is really nice. So the way it works, it's basically trying to enter a valid number and then it goes to the next cell, next cell, next cell, next cell. And whenever no possible uh, correct choices are made, it backtracks 
and uh, continues on from the previous cell with a new number there. So it's a pretty, pretty simple algorithm to implement, but it def definitely teaches you uh, some good uh, concepts for programming. And I also think that doing this in JavaScript and creating some UI for it is a great way to uh, check out what front end is all about. So yeah, fun project. This I can highly recommend. I remember learning a lot from it. Next up, we have typing game, which I think is a very fun one as well. Let's go into typing game and see. Okay, we have also a web page here. So we'll uh, open that like last time and check what's going on. Okay, this is a typer. So only keyword input, start, hit space, boom, and now Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, it seems like <laughs> something is uh, very broken, but I think you get the idea. So the way this game works is that you have a bunch of uh, text and you have to write all of that text to... Uh... Okay, now it maybe works. Oh, fuck. <laughs> For this, you have to write some algorithms yourself to find out, okay, which word am I actually typing to fill it out and there's uh, some game logic and and maybe the most important concept you learn from doing a project like this is objects so this is written in javascript and knowing myself the code is probably kind of messy uh, but yeah like you see here i use classes to create the enemies which in this case are words and uh, yeah it teaches you a lot about object oriented programming so uh, really, you could create any game. Now, I thought creating a typing game was fun as it requires very little graphics, which is nice. So, uh, yeah, I also really recommend this project. Now, what's funny to see here, let's see if we can find the array of words that I was using. I remember I saw skateboarding. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the word list I created. Angry, skateboard, Wi-Fi, computer, dogs, lemons, and keyboard. So, it uh, really reflects what I was thinking about at the time uh, okay next up we have the last project which i would recommend which is damn vulnerable web applications so what this is is a very cool project that lets you set up some predefined web applications and your goal is to hack it now i remember this being super fun at the time and if we actually go back to the first videos on my YouTube channel, we can see that uh, I created some tutorials on how to solve some of the easy levels on damn vulnerable web applications. Today, I will be teaching you how to create a uh, very simple uh, brute force program that you can use to uh, log into websites as well. So uh, yeah, I think this is really great as you learn uh, you actually learn so much about web security from this and you can also create some fun scripts like here i created a, a simple brute force script in python and i use stuff like beautiful soup uh, to interact with web pages and stuff so uh, yeah also a very fun project i would really recommend checking it out okay that's basically what i wanted to show you today so let's uh, go over these one by one ah and you know what i actually want to add a bonus project i don't think i have the code for this on github as i created this before my github days let me check it was a ping pong robot oh oh pong no two weeks ago that can't be it <laughs> okay so i don't have this project unfortunately but what this was was i did a couple of hardware projects yeah i'm guessing i used an arduino and wrote in the c plus like language that you use for that and What's super fun about hardware projects is that you actually see what you're creating very much. So I'll show you a video of the ping pong robot right here. And yeah, look at it go. Isn't it magnificent? Oh, <laughs> so shit. that is also something I would recommend. So, okay. The takeaways from this video is that when you're learning programming, I think it's a good idea to keep it fun. I hope maybe you got some ideas for stuff that you can create to learn programming. And also, I hope you have gotten some ideas and subscribe if you want to see more.